You're watching a free sample video from Teacher's Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. Phenotypes, genotypes, and incomplete dominance. So first let's talk about what the terms genotype and phenotype mean. Genotype is the set of alleles possessed by an organism. You can just remember the genes, genotype. Um, recessive information is present in the genotype. So um, AA, that means uh, you're homozygous dominant um, with two capital A's. Big, capital A, lowercase a, heterozygous, meaning you've got a dominant uh, as well as a recessive. Or you could see uh, lowercase a, lowercase a, which is or homozygous, I should say, recessive. Um, so in the latter two cases there that we just looked at, um, we see the recessive information is present there in the genotype. Phenotype is a set of traits expressed in an organism. So it's, what, it's the traits, not the alleles. Um, traits are what we actually see. So we see someone's blue eyes or their brown hair. Um, the alleles that code for that, we don't see. Um, recessive information typically will not be shown in the phenotype. It's there in the genotype, but usually the dominance uh, the dominant trait is what gets expressed and that's all we see. So for example, earlobes, attached or detached earlobes. Um, the phenotype is what we actually see. Are they attached or detached, the trait. The genotype is AA codominant, um, AA hetero uh, heterozygous, um, where the capital A is still dominant, um, or lowercase a, lowercase a, as we see at the top of the diagram here, which is homozygous recessive. So in both of the lower cases there, um, the, the capital A, capital A, or the capital A, lowercase a, the dominant trait of detached earlobes wins out. And the trait that is shown, the phenotype, is, det is uh, detached earlobes. But in the case where there are two recessive alleles, um, so the genotype is homozygous recessive, then we see the, de the demonstration or the expression of the recessive trait, which is attached earlobes. So the phenotype is attached. So understanding the difference in those two terms is really important because often on the exam they'll ask you things that uh, they get at your knowledge of what those mean. Now there are some rare cases where dominance is not complete. Um, so incomplete dominance means the dominant allele is not completely dominant. Instead, the two traits basically blend. Um, so red petals um, and white petals, maybe red petals are dominant, but they're incomplete in their dominance. So we end up with pink petals. Um, you'll only see this with heterozygous individuals where you have one dominant and one recessive and then the dominant allele does not completely dominate and you get partial expression of the recessive trait. Um, and it blends with the dominant trait to create this new expression or this new trait. With homozygous individuals, they'll still show normal dominance. So if you get a red allele and a red allele, then you're going to obviously have that dominant red color. And if you get two recessives, you're going to have the recessive color of white or whatever, whichever one happens to be dominant and recessive. There's also a situation which we call codominance, which is a little different than incomplete dominance. Codominance occurs when an organism expresses both of the traits in the case of heterozygotes. Um, so meaning you get the, a dominant and a recessive, um, but they basically are both kind of dominant. So there's not really one that's actually recessive um, in, the, in the common sense. So to go back to the flowers, this would be a case, which does happen in certain kinds of flowers, where a red and a white um, cross-pollinate, and instead of getting pink, you get some red petals and some white petals. So in that case, we have co-dominance, and that's how it differs from incomplete dominance. With incomplete dominance, you got all pink petals. With co-dominance, you got some red petals, some white petals. Another example of co-dominance is the idea of blood typing. Um, with someone with blood type AB shows both A and B antigens. Um, so in this case, someone with AB, because they have both antigens, they can take donations of blood that are A or B, or of course AB. But in the case of group O, a blood type O, they 
that is basically co-recessive. So it's just, it's just both of the recessive genes show up there. So there's no A antigens or B antigens. So group O can donate to any of them without being rejected, but it can only receive blood from other O's. Um, so that's why we usually call uh, AB the universal recipient, recipient and blood type O the universal donor. So this is just a, a practical um, kind of application where you see um, in use the idea of codominance and the effect that it has. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.